Hey folks, Ryan here. Recently I've been getting a lot of questions about how I make these videos and more specifically if it's possible to do something like this in order to create some asynchronous lecture videos that you can share with students. Uh, the answer to those questions is it's complicated, uh, but yes. And so today I thought I would walk you through some of the basics of using screen capture programs to be able to create asynchronous lectures and then talk to you a little bit about how I go about doing that. So today I'm going to start off by talking a little bit about the general theory of using screen capture software to create asynchronous lectures and then I'll walk you through some different methods that you can use to go ahead and do that. So first let's talk a little bit about the theory. The general idea here is to use a program either whether it's Zoom or something more complicated like Snagit or even Camtasia to be able to capture everything on your screen. Now there are some tools like this already built built into PowerPoint, and I'll put links down below, um, but you can like embed narration. However, there's a lot of evidence that suggests that students get a more real interactive experience when they can see you as the professor and not just hear you narrating over slides. And so why that might be debatable, at least operating moving forward with that theory, talking to you how you might be able to do that in your own classes. So the basic idea is to go ahead and set up your PowerPoint presentation. So so that the students can then see that and then having your video showing in the upper right hand corner much to how I am appearing right now. There are a couple considerations that go in effect in when it comes time to put presentations like this together. Chief among them is you may have to take a look at your presentations to make sure that there's a spot on the screen for your video to show up. This is less critical if you're using the built-in tools on a program like Zoom, which would show you separate, but it's really important if you're trying to create videos that might be uploaded and shared someplace like YouTube. So you can see in this presentation, what I've attempted to, uh, to do in my slide design is to ensure that every single PowerPoint has a space up here in the right hand corner where there's no content. And I do that on purpose because that is the main place that I would put my video of myself giving the presentation as I work my way through. And so you can see on every single slide that spot remains empty so nothing gets in the way of it as I move through my presentation. So if you have uh, really kind of heavy full slides, you may have to move some stuff around before you're ready to record. But generally, if you have at least a small spot in one part, that's gonna work pretty well for this, uh, for this method. So with that, then it's just a matter of giving your presentation, moving through your slides, but having some way to record that. So let's go ahead and move on to that now. There are a couple of different tools and programs out there that would allow you to do direct screen capture. I'm gonna talk about the more simple ones first and then kind of move into some of the more complicated ones which do have more features and options available to them. So first, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about Zoom. My guess in the current uh, environment, many of you are already using Zoom to live broadcast lectures and have been saving copies of these anyways, so this method should seem pretty, uh, pretty familiar with you. But if you want, it's possible in Zoom to simply create a Zoom session with nobody in it but you to record that session and use that as your screen capture tool. So to do that, all you have to do is go ahead and set up a new meeting. I like to use my personal uh, uh, personal room as a place to do uh, to do this because it's already set up to not let anybody in without uh, going through the waiting room um, and then once you have your own personal meeting set uh, set up sorry mine auto sets to record so I don't forget to do it um, go ahead and start by sharing your screen picking the screen that has your uh, PowerPoint on it or you can actually lock it directly to the app if you like and then go ahead and start recording. You can either record directly to your computer if you want a local file, or I prefer to do, go ahead and just do it to the cloud. This will set to the cloud uh, server, and then obviously you'd want to unmute yourself and start your video. Um, that's not going to work right now because I'm using my video to record this presentation, but obviously if you did that, then you would just work through your presentation like you were in the actual classroom, lecturing on the slides, and Zoom would capture both the screen recording of it as well as your video. It would put that in your cloud recordings, and then you could either download that, upload it to a service like YouTube, or simply share that link with your uh, with your students. And so 
I suspect for many folks, this is probably the easiest way to go about uh, go about doing it. Zoom has pretty good captioning tools, and so it does a decent job at auto captioning you. One of the things that I like about it is it actually has an attempt at punctuation. Uh, then you can go back and fix those to make your stuff accessible if you're not operating off of a uh, off of a script, which is what I assume most folks are uh, planning on uh, on doing for these kind of quick uh, quick and easy lectures. That said, this process can also be replicated with a variety of other uh, tools that exist on the internet. And so there are websites like Loom and Screencast-O-Matic, which function in very much the same way. They allow you to kind of record what is on your screen. They do have some limitations on their free versions, like example, uh, for example, I know that Screencast-O-Matic only lets you do a 15-minute video unless you pay for the full version. Uh, it's not too expensive, but again, there are those, uh, those limitations. When you start to look at some of the software alternatives to doing screen capture uh, programs, there's a ton of different stuff out there. If you do a Google search, for um, uh, screen capture software, a bunch of things are going to uh, to pop up that you're able to uh, to use. Um, however, there are some more feature-rich programs, and so the next thing I want to talk about just a little bit is kind of what uh, how I do my process which is using a program called Camtasia. So this is the Camtasia software uh, software program. I've been using Camtasia for a few years now. Um, I think I started on, gosh, I don't even remember, it was like version eight, and then I'm on, this is 2018. There is a 2019 version, which I haven't upgraded to, uh, to yet. I'll put links for this down in the doobly-doo but uh, there is a trial version that you can get that has some limitations and then the full version is worth a few bucks. But I'll be honest that uh, this is my main both screen capture program as well as video editor that I use. I keep having aspirations to, uh, to get better at using Premiere, but for the time being, I found this to be a pretty full featured video editing program. So a couple things that I will point out about Camtasia is that like I said you can edit videos you can already see the first half of the video that I y'all just watched is sitting uh, in here for me to go ahead and edit one of the things that I like about it is that it will actually um, record both your screen and your video as separate windows a lot of screen capture programs don't give you options about where you end up at and so there's kind of like a default and then you're kind of stuck there but Camtasia does a pretty nice job at recording stuff on different channels which means that you can um, actually chop it up and you can start yourself out over here but move it to different places as it goes which can be kind of uh, kind of helpful and uh, and handy but as I mentioned it's got a full-on recorder built in and so you can click record and it lets you screen capture and uh, um, do all the same kind of stuff that I was talking about before so for me I really like this it's got a bunch of other stuff which is more than I want to get into uh, today but a lot of abilities to uh, add transitions and animations and different audio and visual effects, which can be pretty uh, pretty handy. Well, folks, so that uh, that's kind of my process in, uh, in a nutshell. I suspect for most folks that are just trying to get some videos put together, using the uh, using the tools in Zoom is probably going to be sufficient for uh, for y'all. Uh, but for those of you that are interested in trying some more advanced methodologies, uh, I'd recommend checking out programs like either Loom or Screencast-O-Matic, or if you really want to up your game, uh, something like Camtasia could be pretty uh, pretty well. I'll also point out there's a whole bunch of other stuff out there. It's way more than I can talk about. I have a lot of friends that do really cool stuff with the open source open broadcast system. I know folks that really do use Final, uh, Final Cut and Premiere to make amazing videos. And if that is up your alley, by all means dive into it. But just so that you know, in the short term, there are some kind of like easy ways to put together quality um, quality video content and lecture without having to have a really steep uh, steep learning curve. All right, thanks for watching everybody.